All right, hell yeah. So we have material mechanics, and this is part three. And you know what I mean? Can I, can I not, am I not capable of doing something fast? You know what I mean? So we're going to do that. We're going to try to do uh, as fast as possible deriving the impact uh, equations. You know, what's going on. And so, uh, so here we go. So this thing is going to be at a height. It's going to have potential energy. And that's going to be MGH. Okay. Before it impacts, because we're doing an, an impact that's going to lengthen the steel rod. Steel rod acts as a spring. Cool. So uh, the kinetic energy right before impact is going to have the most velocity. The energy is going to be one half mv squared. Cool. And then once the spring, uh, um, uh, I mean, I mean, w w once the yeah, w once the spring absorbs all that velocity. And then the, the spring lengthens, or this metal bar lengthens by some change in length. Now the velocity is zero. There is no kinetic energy, and technically you don't have any potential energy. So now your uh, um, energy of the spring, uh, that energy is, uh, is one half k change in length squared. Cool. And we're not going to drive these. We're just going to assume that, hey, we, we know that. We can do that in other videos. Uh, but there's one catch here. We, we just said the potential energy, let's say we just take it from this datum to impact this datum, you know what I mean? Um, or, or, or let's say it, it, it covers this whole thing, you know what I mean? So it's tapered to cover the whole thing. Well, uh, well, I guess uh, they don't have it drawn like that. So there you go. So, um, um, uh, so that's going to be 0.15 meters. But when it impacts, it is going to lengthen this thing by a change in length. And that, so that means that mass got lower. So if we, if we say, <clears throat> if we say this is the datum, the datum where x is equal to zero, or the height is equal to zero, if that's the datum for potential energy, it has to include that height, uh, you know, uh, it, it is, is this, is this h plus uh, change in length. I would say like height actual, you know, because in the derivation, you can just get rid of this for most things and just be like, who cares? And they, they do that in the derivation. At some point, they get rid of it. Okay, so this MVH is going to be MGH plus, we, we can say MG change in length. Sometimes that's easier to visualize because you have a potential energy. Uh, that's the height plus the change in length. Uh, but in the literature, you'll write it like this. H plus change in length. Cool. Now, with energy, we can say that in any of these are going to be equal. Energy is always equal as long as, it, as, long as uh, friction, you didn't lose energy from the system. Okay, and, uh, but we don't need to know what the hell its kinetic energy is, unless we're just curious. So we can just say this uh, potential energy, and, and now the one that we have, is equal to the energy stored in the spring. And that's going to answer our questions of like, hey, what's the maximum change in length? Um, you know what I mean, maximum stress when that velocity is zero after impact. So let's just do that. So we have uh, mg, and, and I'm going to get it back like this, mg um, plus mg change in length is equal to one half k change in length squared. Well, hell yeah. So now we just have to solve for uh, change in length. You know what I mean? But, but it's a quadratic. So we have to uh, um, get out our quadratic equation which says, um, you know, wh whatever we're doing, you can throw x here, x is equal to, and, and if, you're, if you're on top of your game, you can be like, hey, change in length is equal to uh, negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac, uh, all divided by 2a. But let's take a quick pause right here. I mean, this is part three. We've already done part one and two. So l let's quickly write our uh, material mechanics equations. All right, hell yeah. Strength is force divided by area. And then you have uh, strain is change in length divided by length. And then what relates them? You know what I mean? Um, when, when we maximum pull on something, uh, we get uh, um, a, a maximum change in length. Max pull, max, like max force, max change in length. You know what I mean? So that, that's basically... Uh, and then with modulus of elasticity being your constant, hella steep number, uh, that's why that just goes hella steep. Anyway, all right, so we have, uh, and then you throw this into there, this into there. F equals um, 
modulus of elasticity, change in the length length. And now we want to solve for force. So we go force is equal to Ea divided by L times change in length. And we get into this form because it's, it's, it's very similar to force of a spring is K change in length. And now we can see uh, that our spring constant for our setup, for material setups, is uh, Ea divided by L. Hell yeah. So now I know what this term is. I know what gravity is, and for this problem we'll use g is equal to uh, 9.81 uh, meters per second. And uh, I know what the height is. We're, we're going to be in meters uh, in seconds, and um, and then uh, this is going to be, you're going to change giga, uh, gigapascals to just pascals, and then for sure pascals to, to just newtons per meter squared. And uh, areas are going to be in meters squared. Um, and cool, lengths are in meters, you know what I mean? So I think I think we're all set. Okay, but we, we definitely have to solve this quadratic, so we can we have to get everything to one side. So we're, we're gonna say, hey, this is my squared, so let's do that. So 1 half K change in length squared um, minus MG change in length minus MGH. So you can see that, hey, this is my C term. Uh, this is my B term. And this is my A term. You know I me. Mean? And just know that the B term is a negative. C term is a negative. I have to. Uh, negatives are my nemesis. And this equation's got a lot of negatives in it. So we're gonna do change in length is equal to negative B. Okay, that's just gonna be mg. I can handle. And then uh, plus or minus the square root. Okay, this squared. So it's just gonna be um, that squared. I guess I'm gonna, just gonna write it like this. Uh, I'm going to drop the negative. Won't be needed. And I think that's where I get in trouble. I want to drop negatives as much as possible. So this next thing, can, can we even do this? Uh, we're going to have negative 4AC, but C is a negative. So this negative outside of that 4 will cancel the negative C. Cool, so I'm just going to do positive right, right at the get-go. So we're going to have positive 4. Uh, this is going to be <clears throat> 1 half... Uh, 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 spring uh, one half k, cool, 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 and uh, and then we got uh, and again, you know, like even right now, I'm confusing myself. Did I get rid of the negatives? Sure. So this c is just going to be mgh. Okay, hell yeah. So hopefully, uh, that's usually where I make my errors and try to do too many steps at once. All right, and then we got twice one half k. I'm just gonna, you know, I mean, do. I'm I'm definitely gonna do this and. Uh, one step. We're just going to have k, right? One half times two. Uh, cool. All right. So now, now we, uh, now we have our, our our value for our change in length. You know what I mean? Th this, this is our equation, and, and we're just we're just good to go, right? So uh, let's. Uh, and we like literally, you don't need to simplify this anymore. Um, you don't need to try to get this k outside. Uh, uh, you know, the square root or anything like that. And um, I don't even know you could, because you don't you don't have a k in, in both terms anyway. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's just let's just you know even even from this perspective, let, let's just see let's let's write it one more time. Change in length is mg plus or minus uh, the square root. Uh, of mg squared plus, and this this is going to be 2k, so, you know what I mean, 2, and then, oh, k is uh, ea, so we have ea divided by l, so now we have mgh divided by l, so that's all we did there, ea divided by l is k, so we have 2 uh, ea divided by l, mgh, hell yeah, <clears throat> and now now we're all dividing it by Ea um, divided by L. You know what I mean? I, I guess I'm not going to mess with that. And, and let, let's go to our go, let's go to our let's do our problem. You know what I mean? We have uh, 20 kilograms uh, times 9.81 uh, plus or minus the square root of 20 times 9.81, and that's going to be squared plus two. We have e epsilon, uh, modulus of elasticity which is 210 times 10 to the 9. Uh, this is in newtons per meter squared. This is the only one I'll put units on because you probably don't know it. 
And then area is going to be pi divided by 4, our diameter squared. Our diameter converted, you got to go 1, 2, 3. This is how many, mil how many meters it is, right? So it's 0 0.015 meters squared. And now we have, oh, shoot. All right, sorry about that. We're back. And uh, so we were finding the area, and I'm going to run out of room. That's a bummer. Uh, but we have 20 times 9.8. And then our height is going to be, sorry about this, but our height is 0.15. Um, so don't, don't get confused that our diameter is 0 0.015 meter, uh, which is 15 millimeters, and our height is 0.15 meters. Um, but sorry that got crunched up. We have a length of uh, 2 uh, meters, and now we're, we're going to divide the whole thing, everything, by 210 times 10 to the 9 newton per meter squared and then our area pi divided by 4 diameter 0 0.015 squared and then we're going to divide that by 2 2 meters so like one thing that I'm going to do in my calculations instead of dividing this all at the end by 2 well no 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 I guess, I guess we can do it it's not a big deal and it, you know I mean it doesn't have to be all divided, you know, in your calculator, if you just throw a divide sign here and do the do divide by two, you know what I mean? Sure, that, that, that's going to do the same thing. So, uh, um, all right, so let, let's see if we can do this. We got 20 times 9.81 plus. Now, uh, holy Toledo, it's quadratic, so we have to do everything divided by the bottom. So, uh, now we're going to do the square root of um, 20 times 9.81 squared plus 2 times 210 times 10 to the 9 um, times pi divided by 4 times 0 0.015 squared um, times 20 times 9.8 whoa, 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 times 9.81 um, times the height of 0.15 cool I, th I think we did it um, now, uh, end parentheses, now we're going to all divide it by, I'm going to do two parentheses here, um, 210 times 10 to the 9, and uh, pi divided by 4, uh, 0.015, uh, whoa, 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 uh, squared, and then uh, divided by 2, cool, and then end parentheses. Alright, heck yeah, so uh, this gives us one value of 0 0.0025 um, uh, millimeters and uh, and heck yeah uh, I feel like I can't trust that answer at all no no it is just just because we, we, we did this problem before and we got like uh, point like uh, 1.8 right uh, yeah I'll have, I'll have to go back to uh, go back to it but here, let's get the negative root. Obviously, it's going to be um, probably the wrong answer. Yep. All right, so now now I even have to double check to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. All right, hell yeah. So uh, I, I for sure probably made a mistake because this isn't coming out right. So we're going to go, then, then, so this is going to be good. We're, how do you find mistakes? So we go back to our potential energy. We agree. I agree on that. That's going to be our potential energy. Um, and it's, it's going to be this equation. Uh, and then that's going to equal our energy of our spring. So we can do this. That looks good. Uh, but then if we have to get this equal to zero, negative k, change in length squared, minus mg, change in length, minus mgh. Cool. And then so for our terms, you know what I mean? Uh, let's go back to here. Ea divided by L. You mean so uh, my alpha A is this. So sometimes just doing things individually. So my diameter is point. So my diameter is 15 millimeters divided by a thousand. You know what I mean? That's 0 0.015. We're, we're cool there. Square that times uh, pi uh, divided by four, and this is what I have in my calculator stored as alpha a. Okay. So 210 times 10 to the nine. We can store that as alpha e in our calculator, and the length is two. Um, two stored as alpha l. So now we can go e a divided by l. And now we have our value for k. I already have that stored in my calculator from, from, the, from the day before. Um, so th this is going to be my k. Well, cool. So I already have k in my calculator. Um, so now what, what I'm going to do is uh, like, hey, I, uh, um, now i got, now I got to be careful because I just stored area. So I'm going to store this as alpha b as well. 
because anytime you overlap letters on your calculator. But I am going to say 1 half k, 0.5 alpha k, is my a term for the quadratic. So I'm going to store this as my a term. My b term is negative uh, 20 kilograms times 9.81. And I'm going to store this as my b term. You know what I mean? I guarantee you, if, if these negatives are messing me up, oh, hell yeah, look at this. Negatives are messing me up. I already, already found the answer. Look at that. Look, it's just negative right there. So dumb. So dumb. Um, but l l let's do it this way. So obviously we're going to get the right answer, but um, if you do the quadratic like this, it'll probably just be way simpler. So now we got our C term. Negative uh, 20 times 9.81 times our height of 0.15. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, sweet. So that's alpha C. So now we can say, just real easy, negative alpha B plus the square root, plus or minus the square root of alpha B squared minus 4 alpha A alpha C, um, all divided by 2 alpha A. You know what I mean? Are we looking good there? And, uh, oof, that's not the root I wanted. Hopefully it's the negative root. Um, no, no, no. What, 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 how, how are we messing up? Oh, um... Uh, uh, shoot. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, and, and th this is, yeah, mistakes after mistakes, you know what I mean? Th this is the crazy thing in my mouth. This is not divided by 2a, you know what I mean? We, we just said that. You, you can do this divided by 2, but if you have an a down here, you have to do, in your calculator, divided by 2 and then divided by a. I like to do these shortcuts instead of just dividing and then putting parentheses, uh, but man, uh, I'm still a newbie to that. And so the quadratic is this, divided by 2a. Here's going to be the negative root. And we'll get the positive root for the win. And finally, our mistakes should be 100% gone. And booyah. So we have a change in length of 0 0.00179 uh, millimeters, which is 1.79. Um, and this is like 1.6, 1.79 millimeters. And from, from part two, you know, of doing this, heck yeah, you know what I mean? We, we get 1.78 millimeters. So, uh... Yeah, th this this does stretch it one more millimeter. So that's the take home point is like, hey, this thing is going to elongate one more millimeter. It's going to have a higher stress, um, you know what I mean, uh, related to that. And uh, so, so yeah, so th there you go. So that, that answers calculate the maximum elongation of the bar. And... Um, and yeah, hell yeah, th that, that, that was pretty cool, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and, and let's say, let, let's say uh, you didn't have uh, this extra term. Well, you, you would, you, you could still use the quadratic. You could still, this is your A term and this is your C term, but your B term is zero. So now we can just go zero stored as alpha B and then just come up here to the quadratic. And hell yeah, that was a real fast way to get it. And we're comparing this to 178, um, um, I mean, uh, uh, one uh, one point seven eight, like one zero six millimeters. So th those are different. I'm gonna store this as alpha um, d, but our but our normal answer we're, we're gonna store that as alpha theta. Okay, so here's the actual, and this is this is what you would do if you're just you know no, no one's gonna go to the complexness uh, of doing a quadratic. We you can just say. That is a negligible distance. You, your your potential energy when you're dropping something at like a you know even a, a tenth of a meter is is way more than this extra um, two millimeters of height that you get uh, in potential energy. All right, hell yeah. And then what we're gonna do is finish this with a quick ratio. You know what I mean? We know that our our uh, uh, epsilon max for steel is 0 0.002. Uh, that's going to be our max. So the max change in length we can have is 4 millimeters or 0 0.004 uh, meters divided by 2 meters. So, you know, I mean, that's going to be 0 0.004 divided by 2. This is also 4 millimeters divided by 2,000 millimeters. 4 divided by 2,000. So this is going to be the max strain. And, uh, but we don't see 4 millimeters. You know, we, we only see 1.79. But the other thing is that this 4 millimeters is associated with the max force. You know what I mean? So that this is going to be, um, uh, you know what I mean? And, and where, 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 where do we get this max strength or max strength? 
I mean, max, we, we want max force. You know what I mean? What's the, well, actually not. They just say, what's the max stress, which is kind of this aspect. So we're trying to find the, the force generated um, by this uh, divided by the area. But just in general, if we have this steel bar, I've always said, hey, the first thing you can do is just like, hey, there, there is a maximum limit on this. And so we go to uh, uh, this equation and we say, well, we know our modulus of elasticity. This is a constant. Now this is max. This is 0 0.002. This is going to give us the maximum. So if we multiply 210 um, times 10 to the 9, uh, multiply it by 0 0.002, we get a smaller answer in, in, in Pascal's or Newton per meter squared. Uh, divided by 10 to the 6 just to see what we're dealing with. Yeah, and hell yeah, we get 420 uh, times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared, and this is more known as 420 megapascals. So this is, and, and no one knows what this is, you know what I mean? Uh, but th this is, uh, and we'll kind of get there in a second. Uh, this is uh, the, the max stress that you can have, you know, given, given our, and then given our cross-sectional area, we can use this equation. What's the max force? Well, max force is just uh, the max stress, the max strength times area. And uh, our area is now in our calculator as nowhere, but it's going to be pi divided by 4 times 0 0.015 squared. We're going to store that as alpha A. And uh, now we can find our max force. That's going to be, um, and uh, let's see, 420 times 10 to the 6. So that's 420 megapas megapascals times our area. And we get this number of 74,220 newtons uh, divided by 4.49. And this is 16,000 pounds, you know what I mean, just to get, get some sort. So I can put 16,000 pounds on this. And what we know from material mechanics is, is those are synonymous. If I put 16,000 pounds, this thing's going to lengthen by 4 millimeters. You know what I mean? So, so there you go. Um, uh, and if I put 74,000 newtons, that's the same thing as 16,000 pounds, it's going to lengthen by 4 millimeters. We are not lengthening it by 4 millimeters. We're lengthening it by, um, by 1.79 millimeters. You know what I mean? So you don't even need an equation for this. You can just be like, and, it, and it's a linear, it's a linear thing. So, um, but what I do, if you don't know the equations, I would at least do a factor label method of stacking things. So I can say, um, and I have this, this force of 74. This is our max force. Um, I could either do two things. I could be like, hey, I want to know, I want to know, uh, I know that the max force is associated with, uh, four millimeters. Or I could say that the max, um, stress or the max strength is associated with four millimeters. You know what I mean? So uh, what what I think I think we want to know the max force first, but the problem acts for the max stress, and I want to cancel four millimeters. Well, well sweet. So we have seventy four two two zero newtons divided by four millimeters. When we multiply these millimeters cancel, and we're just left with a basically it's just a ratio. If we were two millimeters, we'd be half that force. So see how you're just you're you're very basically doing a ratio, but I think stacking it into a factor label method. It is just really good because you can just never mess up on your units. And uh, so we have alpha F times uh, um, alpha theta divided by 4. And we get a, um, oh, I feel like I messed that up. Um, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah, th th this is not in millimeters. So, uh, um, so it, it, sorry about that. So it would be alpha theta times 1,000 divided by 4. Cool. So alpha theta times a uh, thousand. Uh, this is 1.79 millimeters, and so we get a force. I'm going to store that as alpha g, and then divide by 4.449. Uh, 4 point four four nine. Four four point four four. Yeah, four point four four nine. I'm sorry. I, I think I got that one just a little bit off. But yeah, so we're generating a force of 7,472 pounds in there, just with something that weighs 44 pounds. So th that is. That is like the staggering take-home point. You're like, what? No way. I, I can I can take 44 pounds, lift it six inches off the ground, and then uh, have an impact, uh, something with all these spring characteristics, you know what I mean, and generate, because it's hella stiff. You know, it's going to stop it, but it's going to stop it in such a short amount of time 
which f equals m a says, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna change its velocity. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, uh, we're we're gonna do it in in such a short amount of time because the forces just get horrendously high. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? When this elongates, you know what I mean? This spring is hella stiff. Okay, sweet. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's just a good little um, ratio there. And for the problem, they don't want to know, you know what I mean, 33,000 uh, newtons or, or 33.2 kilonewtons is what you're generating uh, when you can have a max kilonewtons of 74.2 kilonewtons. So th that's where, you know, people use kilonewtons. It's just easier to say. Um, but they want to know the max stress. So you use this little ratio um, that you have max stress divided by 4. Uh, times your 1.79. So here we go. So max stress is uh, four, 420 times 10 to the 6 megapascals uh, divided by 4. And then uh, we're going to multiply by uh, alpha theta times 1,000. That 1 1.79 millimeters. Cool. So now we get a stress that is it's ridiculously huge. So we're going to divide by 10 to the 6 just to see what this number is. Yeah, and we get a stress of 188 uh, megapascals. Cool. So instead of generating 420 megapascals, we're only generating 188. And the check on reality is if we are changing our length by 2 millimeters, we would just be half that. 420 divided by 2, we'd be at 210, but we are less than half, so we're 188 megapascals. Cool. So the, the answer to this is 1.79. This is exact. The answer actually, because they do it the uh, who cares way, is 1.78 millimeters. You know what I mean? And but we did it. We did it the the heck yeah. Well, let's not uh, let's dot our eyes and cross our t's. So uh, sweet. And maybe I'll show you this page in the book so you can at least believe me. All right. Hell yeah. So uh, I wanna you know go over this in, in another video. But here, here's the thing on impact loading, so you can at least read it or whatever. Um, but we'll get there. So, you know, hey, th instead of MG, you know what I mean? That's why I hate textbooks, because they tried to kind of make too many simplifications. I need to find my pen. All right, so we're back. So, uh, yeah, I instead of saying, instead of saying, wait, you know what I mean? Th this should be MG. So it's MG H plus change in length. And I like to use my little change in length. I think it sticks out more than, than uh, I don't know, just the squigglier the Greek letters, you know, the more that you think you're going to fail the class, I swear. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so, and, and then it's just, they, they do too many steps at once. Because you, you would want this to be WH plus W change in length, uh, which was MG change in length, that made more sense to us, is equal to... And then they, they, they already did this. This is the one-half K. So this is one-half K change in length squared. Well, they already show the K to be EA divided by L. So if you're doing material mechanics and you're not just well-versed that, uh, you know, the spring constant is EA divided by L, you'll, you'll probably just look at that and be like, no, nah, thanks. And But this is one-half K change in length. So I think you can see that. Then we can bring this stuff over here to set it equal to zero. And so we'll have zero is equal to... Um, but then they, they just solved it using the quadratic, and they get, what did they get? They get mg, so they get mg divided by k. Remember how he, we had all divided by k? Cool, so they do that, but they do way too many steps. Because instead of just dividing everything by k and then keeping things, they, they try to get that k inside. So k is ea divided by l, so now you get that ea divided by l inside. And because you divided it by ea, um... Um, EA divided by L, but then you have this that should be inside that's EA divided by L, uh, but that, that has a square root. So the one, the one below is just EA divided by L, and then when you bring that into the square root, you square it. So now you're having EA divided by L, this term that you would see, but you're dividing it by E squared, A squared, divided by L squared. So that's why this flips, you know what I mean? And people aren't going to teach you that. So this is EA divided by L, it's flipped. And uh, you just, like, why would you do a, a billion steps? You know what I mean? I, I, I don't know. But, but th th that, that's all. That's all. And this is still the square root. But anyway, if you trust them, you have uh, delta, you know, your change in length. This is the equation for change in length. You, you throw everything in that we did, you get the right answer. It, it's just, um, no one's going to be doing this on a test because uh, it, it requires too much... Um, like one, like how we did it, we just get the answer and then throw in the values. This is that you you do like, 
you try to clean it up as much as possible. It's, it's insane. Um, so, so anyway, and then they, then they start to uh, make uh, their assumptions. Uh, well, may, maybe not even at this point. Where, 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 where do they where do they make the uh, the assumptions? I, I'm sure you've already read it. Um, but if we like one of these is just um, very very small. And oh, this is this is bumming me out. Uh, I think I think oh, it's it's when they get it to here. Oh, and so, so and then and they're trying to simplify it even more. So you get this with a lot of W's and L's and EAs. So they're going to say, well, um, the change in length is uh, W L divided by E A. But they're they're saying they're saying this. If you just rest uh, that chunk of steel on that rod. It's going to have a weight of 44 pounds, or it's going to have a weight of mg. You know what I mean? It's going to be 20 times 10. Uh, 10 is 9.8. You know what I mean? So it's going to have 200 newtons. You know, downward. That that that's the force of mg, and that's going to be equal to the weight. And uh, um, but then you know, gen general. So here's our strength equations: force divided by area, uh, change in length divided by length, and then sigma is equal to modulus of elasticity times uh, the, the change in lengths. And then so if you if you throw, this is very important to get these three equations and then start throwing this one into there. F, F divided by A is uh, modulus of elasticity, change in length divided by length. Because now we can get an equation for force. Force is equal to EA divided by L, change in length. And yeah, oh no, duh, force of a spring is um, K change in length. And, uh, and so our force, uh, and they call this the static force, you know what I mean, or, or the change in length static. And, and, and I, I even apologize right here because they're not trying to find the, 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 the force for change in length. But you can, you can see what they're doing. And if you rearrange this spring equation for change in length, that's going to be your spring constant divided by your, are we doing that right? No. Um, if you're trying to rearrange this for change in length, it's the force of the spring divided by K. So in, in our case, the force on the spring is going to be mg, that's w in, in this literature, and then we're dividing it by the spring constant. So w divided by ea divided by l, you know what I mean? So could, could you do that? w divided by ea divided by l? But not when you just look at it like this, it looks, it looks totally Greek, you know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, this is kind of cool, we're just walking our way through it. Maybe we don't even need to do a part four, we just do it right now. Okay, so, uh, and yeah, yeah, I guess they spell it out in the next one, mg, but but still, they don't spell out the spring constant and, and what, what the spring equation is. Force of a spring, k change in length, change in length must be force of a spring divided by k. Force of a spring is mg, k is ea divided by l. Okay, hell yeah, did it. And, and then, so what they're doing is they're taking this and then they're trying to throw it back into, uh, um, uh, back into this equation. So anywhere where we see a WL divided by EA is like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, that's just, uh, this comes from, you know what I mean? Th th this comes from that static loading, and we see this term. So the, uh, the change in length due to static loading weirdly comes up, um, you know, three different times in here. And so that's what they do. So the, if you, and we already know, if you set up your problem to where... You're you're just like okay. I have a four. I I got this. It's forty four pounds. It, it's mg. Now I want to put it at a height of anywhere. That's the thing that's that's variable. I know that if I just rest it on this rod, it, 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 we're going to have a change in length due to static. That that's going to be their delta s, and uh, and I guess yeah, that's force of a spring divided by um, divided by k, and that's going to be mg divided by ea divided by l or weight l divided by ea. I think you get it. And so, uh, but it's just not spelled out. Like reading textbooks is, is hella ridiculous. Uh, but it's kind of fun. It's like puzzles, you know what I mean? So that's that's where they went for here. They took uh, they took they took this equation and got it uh, um, um, the static change in length plus the static change in length squared plus two times h times the static change in length. But you have to take the square root of all of this. So now this is where they they oh they they factor out. A, uh, um, a change in length static, so it's going to be 1 plus, uh, um, holy Toledo, what, what do they do? 
uh, I feel like, um, oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess so, yeah, yeah, because, uh, um, yeah, the, these are, these are going to be, oh, I can't even do that right now. All right, Haley, I, I got it, I got it, because this is a square root, you know what I mean, so let's at least do that one. So if you have the square root of delta of change in length squared plus 2h change in length, if you wanted to factor out a change in length, I mean, if you want, you have, you have to get something that looks like this, change in length squared outside of this, and this becomes change in length, and you can then factor it out. But you have to factor out a change in length squared, so here you have to uh, um, divide, you have to multiply this by a change in length divided by um, change in length. Uh, oh, oh, damn it. What are they doing? Yeah, 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 you have to do that. You have to multiply by a change in length and divide by a change in length. This doesn't change. This is a unit of one, but now now you have a change in length cubed divided by change in length. All right, hell yeah. Let's see if we can do this before our camera dies. And then we got 2h change, change in length squared divided by change in length. Um, and... Uh, so, so if we factor out a change in length squared is what we want, we're going to have change in length divided by change in length plus 2h divided by change in length. You know, this is 1 plus 2h divided by change in length. But we have that term out there, and then uh, this is still squared, but this term is outside the square root. Uh, it is squared change in length, and then that just simplifies the change in length. You know what I mean? So now... You, you, you can factor it out. So this is how you, if you're factoring out a change in length, this obviously becomes 1, but this becomes 1 plus 2h change in length. So yeah, it's just, just a lot of complicated math steps, but there you go. And it's from here, and we're about ready to end, is that well, what term is ridiculous? Um, uh, oh, okay, so uh, uh, this, this is your static change in length. And this is going to be really potatoes, you know what I mean? Like, we, even with impacting that, we're, we're generating 2 millimeters, you know what I mean? Out of, out of 4 millimeters. But if we just statically put 44 pounds on, uh, 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 you know what I mean? Uh, or, or mg, 20, or 200, 200. If we put 200 newtons, when we can put up to 420 times 10 to the 6, we, we can put this many newtons on there before we give a care. You know what I mean? And, and what, what you're saying, you're putting 200 newtons? You know what I mean? That, 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 that's going to generate, you can see the fractional change in length that's going to generate. It's ridiculous. And because that's a really, really tiny number, we're dividing by a tiny number. Um, oh, damn it. Doesn't, doesn't this just get huge? Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, no doubt. Okay, yeah, this is the driving part of this equation. Yeah, so I, I, I was thinking the opposite, but no, like this, uh, 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 even though it says static change in length, it's just a parameter that it kind of pops out of this equation. Um, but because this, because this number is just tiny, this is going to, like one, like a number divided by a tiny number, this number gets huge. And it's going to be way bigger than one. You know what I mean? I don't even know how big it's going to be. But just you can see that it's going to be way bigger than one. So a huge number plus one is theoretically just the same thing as that huge number. So you can get rid of, of this. And then even, even when you take the square root of it, of a huge number, the square root of a huge number, well, hey, you still get a, a fairly decent sized number. And then a fairly decent sized number plus one well, you know, equivalency is, is just pretty much a decent number. So that's what they're doing here. And now you can say um, that the, the max change in length is just going to be uh, uh, the static change in length and then the square root of 2h uh, static change in length uh, and like that. But I, I like to do this. Change in length max is equal to normal change in length divided by the square root of 2h change in length. Oh hell no! My camera SD card is filling up, and I'm, I might have I might be uh, I, I might have missed huge chunks of this, but I, I'm still gonna post it. Who cares? So sorry about that. But I think we got it all. I think we got it all. So even here, like what what the hell do you try to do? Like how how do you how do you get this inside the square root? You know what I mean? Well well isn't this uh you know what I mean the same thing as uh, change in length squared square root? You know what I mean two h change in length. Cool. So now, now you can, and now you can just encompass the whole thing. This is change in length squared, 
H2H divided by change in length. So now, hell yeah, this is going to be uh, change in length uh, 2H. Uh, that, that's it. It's going to be change in length 2H. Cool. So now you have uh, change in length max is equal to <clears throat> is equal to uh, 2H change in length. Or, or, or how, how do they say? Yeah, 2H times the static change in length. So that, that's what they're doing there. And what the hell is the static change in length? This is the force of a spring. Force of a spring is K change in length. This is your static change in length. So change in length is force of a spring divided by K. And again, that's mg. The mass times the gravity divided by K is that's EA divided by L. So hell yeah. So if we wanted to change this, it's the square root of 2. H doesn't change. That's the drop height. Uh, this is going to be MGL. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. EEA. Did I say EA? EA. Sorry. EA divided by L. So this is uh, MGL divided by EA. And, and, and did we get it? Uh, and then even there, they, they don't even give it into this. You know, this is your max change in length. This is going to be your delta max. And they don't even give you this equation, which is just criminal. Because, hey, you could, you could throw in the height, the mass, the gravity, the length equal to EA. What they say is, is, is they just, they, they, they don't even give you that step. And they give it in terms of, uh, of, uh, vo velocity. You know what I mean? Just, just the, which is, which is really bizarre to me. Because your energy, obviously, is going to, um, whoa. Yeah, uh, I, 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 oh, damn it. No, yeah, th th this is criminal in this textbook that they just do that. That, that, that was the laughing point of this thing. It's just like, what? Okay, we, we can obviously say that we're saying that mg h is equal to one half mv squared is equal to one half k change in length squared. Yeah, we, we know all this, you know what I mean? So uh, so what they're saying is uh, they're, they're trying to solve for uh, v squared, and if you just take this, you're saying v squared is 2gh. See how you minus the m? So they're, they're just saying v squared is 2 uh, is 2gh, and then they say, oh, well, I see 2gh in this equation. So now I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to say that's v squared plus the mass. So, so that, yeah, look at that. Mass v squared L divided by EA. But that, that, that's useless. When you're trying to solve the problem, I, I, I don't think you're going to solve for velocity first. You know what I mean? So, uh, again, like the, the, the take-home equation that's not even in here is just the simple one. It's uh, 2 uh, mgh L divided by EA. I mean that, that that's how that's how you solve this one simply, and uh, it's not even in there. So uh, and yeah, that's just really surprising. So we're we're gonna at least go over the basics of that one because we said potential energy is mgh. Yeah, plus that m plus mg delta l uh, change in length. But we're we're done with that. We're we're just assuming that's zero. We we've already we've already said nah thanks on that. They do the not thanks right here. <clears throat> you can just do the not thanks right here. <clears throat> and then you have a kinetic energy. Before impact is one half mv squared. And then you have the energy of the spring. <clears throat> when that gets max, uh, there's going to be no more kinetic energy. Velocity goes to zero. And so that's going to be one half k change in length squared. So now we're just going to equate these two things. So you have mgh is equal to one half k change in length squared. And now you can solve for change in length. And so that's going to be 2mgh divided by k. Do you see that? So you have change in length squared is 2mgh divided by k. Sorry if I did too many steps there. Change in length is the square root of 2mgh divided by k. Um, and... Uh, and, and and even here, like yeah, isn't this isn't this the same one that we got? Well, because didn't we say change in length max? This is the one that we wrote down: two mghl divided by ea. So uh, how how do we get that? Well, we say that k is ea divided by l. And again, that that's going to be force of a spring is k change in length. And then if you do, let's do it one more time because these are these are the equations you always need to write down every time for material mechanics. You need to say that strength is force divided by area. Stretch is change in length divided by length. And what relates them 
is pulling it into a device, you know what I mean, having your specimen of whatever get pulled into a device to a max force, knowing the area, that generates a max PSI, and that max PSI generates a, a change in length max, you know what I mean, and you know the length of your specimen. So you can have a, a, a ratio of change in length divided by length, change in length max divided by length, that gives you max uh, strain. Cool. And then also you're going to you're going to find the max force that that took, you know what I mean? And then so if you found the max force, you you can say uh um strength max is the force max divided by your actual area. Hell yeah, I'm glad I did that because I think I think you do need to bring up the idea of testing something, pulling it to a force that's max, generating a max change in length and uh and 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 uh yeah, and equating that. So uh uh, this is going to be, but you don't do it in terms of force and change in length because you want because the force is only determined with your area of your specimen. Um, but force divided by area is for every specimen of that material. You know what I mean? That, that's going to be your your PSI. Your PSI generated in this setup is going to be the same as if you doubled it or halved it. You know what I mean? Changed changed the even changed the length and you know what I mean. All, all that stuff. Same thing with uh, the change in length divided by area. This ratio is always going to be the same for every length of specimen. All right, so if you put them together, you get strength is modulus of elasticity times strain, and, and now you throw these two into here. So you get force divided by area is E, change in length divided by length, and then the first one to do is get force all by itself. Force is EA divided by L, change in length, and now you can just see that it's totally synonymous with the spring force. You know what I mean? So K is change EA is, is, is EA divided by L. But if you're not solid on being like, oh, I know exactly what K is, EA divided by L, go through exactly that process every time. So we're going to have change in length. So this K now is EA divided by L, and we're going to get 2MGHL divided by EA. And, and th this is the who cares, you know what I mean? This is the 1.78 millimeters that, that's in the book, and we'll show you that before we end the video. All right, hell yeah. So uh, so th there you go. There's the full de derivation, and I, I love it. I wasn't expecting to do the derivation, but sometimes you just get the fire underneath you, especially when textbooks are just really difficult, really difficult to, to read and stuff. So uh, booyah, booyah. And then I guess they do the same thing for like, you know, the, the stress, you know, hey, l l let's see if we can derive where this comes from. They're saying uh, strength is equal to modulus of elasticity times change in length divided by length. Okay, yeah, 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 duh, that, that, that's going to be that just basic equation of strength is E uh, modulus of elasticity times strain. And they're just saying strain is change in length divided by length and they're throwing max max change in length in there which we now derived an equation for um and then we're not going to go over that derivation you know what i mean but if you want to if you want to read it i'll leave that up just for a second uh we're going to leave this up for a second you know what I mean? and and they probably get it into useless useless uh, equations hey that that one looks halfway decent you know what i mean that one looks halfway decent uh but still uh uh stress Hey, what's the stress? Okay, so yeah, this this value is probably dumb. You know what I mean? So um, you, what what's that? You know what I mean? So uh, if if you're just resting that thing on the metal, it has a mass, and then we know that we know that the force down is mg, and so uh, so the stress um, due to that force on here, uh, this is this is our area. Um, uh, that, uh, so our equation for strength is force divided by area. So cool, it's going to be mg divided by area. And in, in, in our bar, so e even just right there, that would have been just more helpful. You know what I mean? That strength max, so this is the equation that I would write, is 2h modulus of elasticity um, times mg uh, divided by uh, uh, al. You know what I mean? Because then, then I know what the area is. I know the length is. And you could even go one step farther in saying that this is going to be, uh, this is going to be mg divided by pi divided by four diameter squared. You know what I mean? And then you could do it in terms of diameter. 
That's going to be 4mg divided by pi d squared. I don't know. You don't have to get too techy. Just, just like this works. You know, you know your area, you know your length, you know your mass, you know your gravity, modulus of elasticity, and you know your drop height. You know, even here, they, they required you to do one more step. And who the hell is going to turn this into uh, um, uh, the velocity? You know what I mean? Because, yeah, again, again, they do that same thing. Is uh, 1 half mv squared is equal to uh, uh, mgh. Uh, cancel out the m's and then solve for v2. Uh, that's going to be 2gh. So everywhere where I see 2g and h, right there and there, I can put a v squared. Uh, I don't know. I've never done a problem where that was actually useful. So maybe in the comments, like, throw in a problem where it's like, nah, you definitely want that v squared. I have no idea. But there you go. v squared, m, mass, and then e. And then I don't like how they capitalize mass, but, you know, you can't win them all. Can't win them all. Uh, but yeah, divided by al. So cool. So that's where they got that. Now it's fairly simple. Okay, and then they talk about the impact factor, if you want to read that, and how, uh, if, if, this is fascinating. Uh, I, I just thought that was, this was very fascinating. So, if, if you have that weight, uh, and you just hold it, so it's not, so it's not resting. Like, the, the weight itself of 44 pounds is stretching it a tiny amount. And so, in this, they're saying, well, let's say you just lift that 44 pounds so there is zero, that there is no stretch on that bar. You know, that's, that spring is not stretched at all. And then you just slowly, ever so slowly, uh, like, set the weight onto it. You know what I mean? Oh, no, 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 no. This, no, if you do that, then, then, then you'll just lengthen, lengthen it to that 44 pounds. But what they say is that you hover it uh, with no drop height, and then you just instantly let it uh, impact with no height. So h is equal to zero. So like back to uh, our equations, our, our delta max is equal to, uh, you know, change in length to, you know, we, we got we got this. But if h is equal to zero, well, we, we're, we're definitely not, like this becomes zero. So then what gives? Well, we do have a special case where it just becomes two times the static loading. And that, that is an equation where, yeah, so that, that is one where you want to go back to here and say, nah, this number actually isn't that big. And these ones and these ones do a driving and, and, and you will generate something. Because look, look at this, because you still have H here. So from this equation, it totally spells it out. You know what I mean? If H is zero, hey, you still have one plus one. So you still have uh, and that that's going to be one plus one is two, so it's two times the static loading. Um, I, I think, I mean, from the equation perspective, that's where that comes from. I think you could do it one more from you could do it from the energy energy perspective uh, of like hell yeah, you do have an mgh. You're you're there is no force on the spring. Force on the spring is zero before it lengthens, and then it's going to. Uh, uh, you know, your average force is what's going to slow that down. It's F equals MA. We talked about that in part one and part two. Is that, you know what I mean? If you don't have any, if you don't have any force on this, it's it, it, because the spring, even at time, even even when you let it go, there's no, there's technically no force that's slowing it down. So it's going to fall under gravity until that spring lengthens. But they kind of happen synonymously and instantaneously. That would be a good one for Excel. So I'll keep that in mind just to show you in Excel, like why that's two times the, um, you know what I mean, the 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 standard. I'm saying this wrong, but the static static change in length. If you just rested that 44 on here, it, w it would change that amount. But if you if you raised it uh, right right at the um, you know if you just yeah if you hovered it and then instantly let go with no drop height, uh, this would be your max. Okay, hell yeah. And then hell yeah, read the limitations. You know, maybe a couple years later, you're like, whoa, everything is uh, an assumption. And hell yeah. So here was our problem. Uh, the standard change in length was just a, a hundredth of a millimeter. Yeah, potatoes. And then, uh, you know, you run through all the equations and you get that. You get the 1.78. Uh, they don't do it the techie way. I mean, oh yeah, no, they do. Thank goodness. Yeah, they do it the techie way. Because that, that would make n nonsense if they didn't do it both ways. So 1.79, 1.78, that's what we get. And I didn't go over impact factor. Who cares? Uh, but it just shows you the ratio of the delta max compared to... The the stand the uh, uh, st seems like standard but uh, static static it's, it's just it's just resting that 44 pounds on there you know very 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 tiny but obviously this impact factor uh, gonna be a sizable number you know what I mean um, 
Uh, cool. And then uh, max was 188 megapascals, and just to check on reality, it was 420 megapascals, or 420 million uh, newtons per meter squared. That's a pascal. And so this number, com uh, uh, this number happens at 4 millimeters. If we had 2 millimeters, we'd have uh, 210 megapascals. We didn't have 2 millimeters, we have 1.78. So just finding checks on reality, because material mechanics sucks. You're dealing with millimeters and you're dealing with huge numbers, especially in the metric. Um, cool. And, and then uh, the, 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 you know, how many megapascals are you going to generate with 0 0.01 millimeters? Well, what's the difference between 0 0.01 millimeter, 4 millimeters and 0 0.01? 4 divided by 0 0.01, you're going to have 8,000 times difference. So if we take this 420, 420 divided by 8,000, you're only going to generate... Um, oh, why, why didn't that come out right? Uh, I, I feel like that that, that should have been... Uh, um, what? Because, uh, yeah, the static loading, the static loading... Well, why, am I, why, why, why is my check on reality? Like, didn't, didn't they say static... The static change in length is 0 0.01. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Holy Toledo. It's 0 0.01 millimeter. Um, no, I think I'm I think I'm right there. So we have 0 0.01 divided by 1,000. No, damn it. Um, so 4 millimeters. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's do this. You know what I mean? So we have... Uh, um, so we have 420 megapascals divided by 4 millimeters. This is our factor label. And then we're saying we have something that's 0 0.0106 millimeters. Okay, and we want to generate, we want to know the megapascals generate. 0 0.0106 divided by 4. Uh, invert that. Yeah, it's not 8,000. I, 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 I don't want to catch my error, but let's just get on with life. So it's, 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 uh, it's this number. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's, it's just this. This number times 420. Uh, and yeah, we get 1.11 megapascals. All right, hell yeah, hell yeah. So there's check, and that's it. That's it. That's impact loading. Uh, we did a problem, and then we went through the textbooks just to see what they do because reading textbooks, oh, it, it's a pain in the butt. So uh, yeah, hell yeah. Thanks for joining me, and that's a video.